So in this quiet time, I thought, okay, I've just, this week my mind's been on him, I'm going to be quiet. Mm. And I thought what he was going to show me was, here's my will for your life. Here's, you know, your next step. But it wasn't. And I'd like to share with you what it was because it was quite embarrassing. Hey, everybody. I'm Lindsay. And I'm Suzanne. And welcome to the Find and Follow podcast, where our goal is to help you engage your faith outside of Sunday. So we are joined today by one of our friends, Kathy Dunderdale. Kathy welcome. attends New City South Park with her family and is one of our New City Academy teachers. Kathy, thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure to be here. So, so glad you're here. Me so too. we've been in the middle of the Lent season. So each week on the podcast, we've been diving deeper into a theme and a topic surrounding Lent. And so this week, we're diving deeper into fasting and why we talk about it around Lent. And that's why Kathy's here. Yes. Kathy, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Okay, Kathy, can you just introduce yourself to us? Tell us a little bit about who you are. Yes, uh, my name is Kathy Dunderdale, and we've been in Charlotte for about 30 years. My husband and I, we have an adult daughter yes. who fortunately is part of your community yay, group. Yay. We love yes. Charlotte. Yes, yes. <laughs> and um, about 12 years ago, we started attending New City Church. Okay. And during our time in Charlotte, I've mm-hmm. had the great privilege of going to Bible College, Lee University had a campus here, and to Gordon-Conwell Seminary. Oh, cool. And awesome. I went there, too. Yeah. Yes. So it's been wonderful, and this church has really allowed the opportunity to share that. So it's awesome. been great. Yes. Very good. And tell us what you do a little bit with um, New City. You are one of our academy teachers. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I have the great opportunity to teach on a wonderful team mm-hmm. of people who really love the Lord and support each other. And we have so many members, both of this campus and South Park, awesome. who really want to grow more deeply into the uh, the relationship with the Lord yeah. so that we can find and follow Jesus and help others to do so. Mm-hmm. So awesome. we're making Love disciples that. here. Awesome. Love Thank you, that. Kathy. Yes. Thank you for your role in that. So Kathy, we're going to dive deeper into fasting. Mm-hmm. So can you define fasting for us? Like at the most basic level, what is fasting and why is it considered a spiritual discipline? Yes. Simply it's abstaining from food for a set period of time in order to seek God more intentionally. Okay, let's unpack that. Okay, yes. I think Dallas Willard does a nice job Ooh, in I love the spirit mm-hmm. of, the, of the disciplines. What fasting does, it confirms our utter dependence mm-hmm. upon God by finding in him a source of nourishment beyond food. Mm-hmm. So it is really all about God. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's yes, really our, good. Yes, yes. And it's... That's so interesting. It, the definition is food, yes, right? Mm-hmm. Nourishment, because it's become fasting from a lot of other things. Kind of the origin in the original yes. is food. Yes. Oh, that's great. That's I've really great. That um, what are some common misconceptions about fasting? That is a great question. Yes. You know, we do live in a society where people really value discipline. Mm, so yeah. discipline in itself is not what fasting's about. And it's not about getting through something difficult to say, I've accomplished it and I have a victory. That's not what fasting is. And there's another thing. Jesus never commands the church to fast. I was surprised too. Unpack that. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Basically, he talks about it. Mm -hmm. He talks about it in the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. And he speaks about it in terms of giving and prayer. But he never really says that we're to fast. He just says, when you do fast, keep it private. And when he talks about when he's criticized by the religious leaders, he says there's no reason for these disciples to fast because I'm here. Mm -hmm. Now, I do know in the church, the spirit, the Holy Spirit of God lives in us. But Jesus Mm -hmm. is not walking on the earth. Mm -hmm. And we're waiting for him to set up his uh, kingdom. Mm -hmm. His realm is established. So in between, it's really the church that is fasting. So it's a spiritual discipline that's not commanded, but definitely bears fruit. Yeah, that's really great. I like that. I like the phrase of the new word that the end that you used, the bear fruit. Yes, that's really good. Yes, mm-hmm. and I, I love. I forgot even the language that you used because all of that you said was so good. <laughs> but like, I have fasted before from food um, for like three days, and it became so like rule oriented, or it became so much about like the fasting versus like um, God. I think yes. that's kind of how you have phrased it of like. This is actually about God. It's yes. not, you know, the abstinence um, or abstaining kind of leads you towards a deeper connection with God. Yes. That's really good. Because I'm a rules gal. So I'm like, what are the rules? You know, yes. it's like, what's it look like? But And I think there's a place for rules to yeah. help you understand the practice. <clears throat> but I do, like, I love that you're, the heart of this, 
The heart mm-hmm. of fasting is that it points us to God. Yeah, that's good. So we have to understand it. So I think there's a place for mm-hmm. going, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. But it's also, it's, but the we want to get to the heart of the matter, which mm-hmm. is God. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. I liked what you said about the church being in a time of mm-hmm. fasting. Is that how you said yes. that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's. Did you just find that information? Did you like, where did you find that? I looked at, at Dallas Willard's The Spirit of the Disciplines and okay. the classic is the celebration of the Disciplines by Foster. Richard so Foster. I took a look at those. Yes, yes. Oh, those are great resources. Yes, they are because yeah. they are still relevant yeah, today. Yeah, absolutely. They are. Yes. That's really great. Um, Kathy, what does the Bible say about fasting? Like, are there any stories or examples from the Bible that illustrate the significance of fasting? Well, I'm so glad you asked that Mm -hmm. because there are some wonderful examples. And I learned from this that there are three types of fasts. Okay. So we're going to start with the big guy, Jesus. Okay. Okay, Yes. Mm -hmm. So here he is. He's baptized, right? And mm-hmm. we see the Trinity available, all there. And then the, and then the Holy Spirit, what, leads him into the desert. Mm. So in this desert mm. experience, we're told that he fasts from food and drinking, but we don't believe water. So a normal fast is absta- abstaining from everything but water. So what's mm. going on here? Well, let's take a look at this theologically, right? Yeah. Here he is in a desert. And back in Genesis, we have a man and a woman in a garden. The same mm-hmm. adversary shows up in both situations. Mm-hmm. The man and the woman, with all that they had, it wasn't enough, and they wanted to be sovereign, and they failed. But here's the Lord in the desert, right? He has abstained from bread, but how does he fight the adversary with the bread of life? Mm-hmm. And so you say, like, great question, what's the power of it? You know who walks out of that desert scenario? The Savior. Mm-hmm. We know because of that. You know, we've known from Scripture, but we see from that testing the perfect lamb. So it's a wonderful thing to see. So that's, that's just great. the first one. Okay, that's great. Now, Daniel, Daniel, think of who he is. He's mm-hmm. an Israelite. Now he's in exile in a foreign land, Babylon. But he's not just in the land. He's in the court. And he refuses to give up his identity as belonging to Yahweh. And, yes, mm-hmm. that tended to be more of the law. Mm-hmm. So what he does is he doesn't partake of all of the feast foods Mm. or the delicacies, right? He doesn't do that. And do I think that there was any kind of significance? He was in the court. He influenced the king. Mm -hmm. And I believe that happened. Yeah. Yes. Now, of course, we have Paul shock, right? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Paul does the absolute fast. And the absolute fast is no eating or drinking, including water, for at least three days. Mm. And it happens at a most interesting time. The word fast is not even used, but it's in Acts 9-9. He is on his way for Mm -hmm. further persecution, which he believes he is following God. Of course, the Lord has other plans. Completely, literally blindsides him, makes himself known, and Paul has abstained from everything for three days before then receiving his sight. And how many people in the church are influenced by Paul? Yes. Right. No Think kidding. about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. No mm-hmm. That's great. And there is just one other, yeah. and it's a woman. It's Esther. Now, look at her situation. Mm. Okay. She um, is in Persia. Persia has taken over Babylon, so her people are still in captivity. Mm-hmm. And somebody in the high court of Persia really has a bone to pick with one of the Israelites, so he decides to have them all killed. Mm. It's a genocide situation. And this woman has to go before her husband the all-powerful king, and if he turns her down, she doesn't just walk away, she's executed. So before seeing him, what do you think happens? Mm -hmm. There's an absolute fast for three days. Her, her maids, her uncle, the Israelites, and then, of course, look what happens. Mm -hmm. The genocide's abated. So that's just four examples. Mm -hmm. And um, had you not asked me this, I would have never paid attention to that. So it's very, very powerful, yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks for digging deep and sharing those. What do you think we can pull out from those stories? I mean, so much. <laughs> yes. But yeah, what do you think we can learn from those stories? I really think that we're in situations that are beyond us. Uh, God doesn't want us to forget. He's in control. Mm-hmm. He is sovereign to go to him. I don't think anybody was manipulating God in this situation. I think they recognized their need, mm-hmm. their limitation, and that's what they did. That's so good. Yeah. Really, it's an acknowledgement of who God is and who we are as his children and our need for him. Yes. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, we have a great need for him, and it's a way of just seeking him in a deeper, like, with very great intentionality. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. 
um, kind of a connection, but maybe not. But let me just let me just say my thought and see if it connects. But we're studying in our community group, um, Charlotte and I in, in that group, um, Mark, we're going through the book of Mark. And we just talked about Mark 5 um, with the woman who's been bleeding for 12 years mm -hmm. and then Jairus and his daughter. Mm -hmm. um, Jairus, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Mm -hmm. But um, and Jesus heals her. And we just had this long discussion last night of how both Jairus and the woman were desperate. They were desperate and they were literally at the end of their rope and they were, they had no other hope but Jesus. And it gives me chills thinking about the story of the woman um, is just incredible, but it's like, I feel like the same stories you're talking about, right. It's mm -hmm. like Esther in particular. Like I love the story of Esther. It's like, there's a desperation there and it's yes. like, we need you Lord. And so fasting is like their response almost like out of or their action and that desperation. Yes. Um, so I don't know if there's a direct tie there because there's no fasting in Mark five, but just the desperation and Hey, we, we need you Lord, you know, and um, we have no other hope but you. Um, and the Lord, you know, fulfilled their needs. Um, so, well, your point's well taken because part of practicing fasting yeah. is just the fact that we do know that in this uh, point of history where we are in salvation history, yeah. we're not with him yet. Somewhere along the line, we're going to suffer. Mm, and yes. fasting is to really get you used to doing without and then recognizing that God is enough. So you're learning how in this suffering or this need, to find your joy in the Lord. Ooh, so yes, so you're correct. That's yes. good. Yes. So I don't really put <laughs> denying myself mm -hmm. and joy together. Yes, um, great point. Um, like I put it and like I'm going to deny myself for the sake of trying to attain more of God maybe, mm -hmm. but I don't think about joy coming out of that. That's well said. Mm -hmm. So you're right. You are practicing what is uncomfortable, mm -hmm. suffering. Mm -hmm. But what you're learning to do then is to get your joy from your relationship in the Lord. Mm -hmm. He feels in that time because, as we all know, and as our pastor says, we're either going to be in a crisis, we're in one or, or, or heading into one. And we, we actually have a way of practicing mm -hmm. of how to turn to God and recognizing even in our loss, God can fill us. So as yeah. you can see, fasting is clearly about the Lord. Yeah, amen. That's yes. really good. Yeah. Well, I think that, I mean, leads right into the next question, but um, I don't know if you have other thoughts to add, but how does fasting deepen someone's relationship with God? Again, fasting Everything. from <laughs> someone allows us to feast on God yes. mm -hmm. and just recognize that fasting is not about any kind of manipulation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I say this for this reason. Several years ago, a, a beautiful Christian woman friend understood tithing as... If I give a certain amount, then God's going to uh, 10 times a fold. And, and that's how she understood it. So fasting is not about I have a need, I'm going to fast, and I expect you to fill it. The filling is him. So that's the first thing. Mm. And it reveals something else. Whether we like it or not, something else is controlling us besides resting in his sovereignty. So I would I'd add those two points. Yeah, that's really mm. great. Um, at the most basic level, Kathy, it's like um, fasting is um, – you know, not eating or abstaining from something. But what are we doing in the meantime? You know, is there a prayer or reading scripture? Like, what would you say is happening in this time of fasting, if that question makes sense? It makes a lot of sense. Yes. So let me, let me just share. Right around the time I was asked to do this, I have a very close friend who suffered a, a real loss, a loss of her husband. Mm -hmm. And she was a primary caretaker for quite some time. And you could see it. She would come to our Tuesday morning mm -hmm. class and you could see it, the dream. And simply one day, several months later, she looked different. So I called and said, you look like yourself again. The light's coming from your face. Kathy, she said, my father, he, he just really trained us how to, how, how to live the Christian life. And we used to fast when I was younger. So she said, I've been seeking the Lord because I need the Lord in this time. But she said, I, I said, I needed to fast. So she did a mm -hmm. partial fast for three weeks, abstaining all kinds of breads and sweets and everything, and she shared it. And I thought, I, I don't fast. See, I was really happy. Well, I'm free in Christ, and the Spirit lives in me, so I never saw the benefit of fasting, yeah. right? So um, I had a week where at the end of that week, I was going to have a weekend uh, by myself. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought, I'm going to fast. Now, I didn't fast food. Okay. Okay. I have found myself picking up that phone, yes. and although I'm not of the generation of social networking, I do play the old games that I used to play with pencil and paper on my phone. Okay. And what used to be five minutes was 15 minutes was, 
I can't tell you how embarrassed I was. What game mm-hmm. is it? Uh, word of mouth, card game, solitaire, spike. Oh, you know I get what it. Saying? Yes. Right, right, right. They, they can suck the day away really quickly. Yeah, solitaire is good. That's the word. I know. Right? And so, okay. So I thought, oh my goodness, this is so embarrassing. So I put the, so the first thing that happens is every time you reach for the phone, oh, I'm doing this for a reason. Is there a psalm that you want to read? Is there some, do you want to praise the Lord in some way? Is there a prayer that you want to say? Do you want to thank him for something? Well, when the weekend came and I had realized through this, even my prayer life had become very rote. I had my daily devotion. I had my scripture sheet. I was reading in this particular book. And then I was listing all of my petitions. Never gave the Lord a chance to even speak. Mm-hmm. So in this quiet time, I thought, okay, I've just, this week my mind's been on him. I'm going to be quiet. Mm-hmm. And I thought what he was going to show me was, here's my will for your life. Here's, you know, your next step. That's but it wasn't. And I'd like to share with you what it was because yeah, it was quite embarrassing. I realized I'm a grumbler. Now, I know how to walk into a church setting with a smile on my face and love being with people. But in my heart, what he sees, I'm a grumbler and a complainer. So I've heard people say, if you're a grumbler, say thank you. If you're a grumbler, write a prayer journal. But here's what fasting does in getting to that quiet time. I'm going to show you the root of the grumbling. Mm -hmm. You do not accept my sovereignty. Mm -hmm. What am I grumbling about? He's not doing it on my time frame or what I want. Okay. So what do you walk out there thinking? Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I know you love me. I know you have this. So it reminds me of a story in of 1 Samuel 5. What happened was the Philistines, who were the enemies of Israel during David, captured the ark. This was the presence of God. Yeah. And he, they bring it to a temple of Dagon, an idol. And they set it up next to the statue of Dagon. And every morning they go in and Dagon's on the has fallen on his face. God has such a sense of humor, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So I wake up now. Heavenly Father, you topple my Dagon. Let me realize, you know, that you are the Lord and sovereign. And there's much to be thankful for because you know what you're doing. Amen. Now, did I know that on Monday? No. Mm-hmm. So that's what I mean. You, 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 yeah. I can't tell you what the Lord has yeah. for you. It's probably more than you realize. Amen. That's good. Yes, because I Thank didn't start Thank you for sharing that. that. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank I'm you. also I re- a grumbler. So. <laughs> I, I, well, I appreciate, well, first your honesty yeah. and, and like just being honest with us and I know you as this lady that comes in with a smile and my encounters with you would not have said mm-hmm. that about you, but, mm-hmm. um, thank you for being vulnerable with mm-hmm. us. And I do, there's so much to be said of what happens when we pause mm-hmm. and spend time with God in a different way mm-hmm. and putting a practice mm-hmm. in that we don't normally do to go, okay, help me. I want to know you more, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I I want to understand how you know me. Yes. That's a hard question to Mm -hmm. ask. Yes. So even though we see it possibly as um, a a discipline and maybe we think discipline punishment, Mm -hmm. that has nothing to do Mm -hmm. with it. It's you seeking him out and him wanting to show you, Mm -hmm. you know, he didn't show me this because he wanted to discipline me. He showed me this because it was getting in the way of our yeah. relationship. So that's what he wants. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I relate to that. Um, I don't play a lot of games on my phone, but I am, <laughs> I am an Instagram gal. And yes. so I'm uh, fasting for social media for, for Lent. And it is like a lot of what you said I'm really connecting with as far as like prayer life kind of being like uh, rote, I think is the word you used. And um, once I've like put that kind of my phone down and stopped spending time kind of scrolling. Um, and it was just comparison, kind of my thoughts weren't in a great zone. Um, but once I put that down, like the, my prayer life is just a lot richer and I can hear Mm -hmm. the Lord a lot better. And Mm -hmm. there's something about that pause that you're talking Mm -hmm. about. Um, and in times when I would pick up my phone, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to kind of pause here for a minute and, um, you know, be mindful of, Hey, who do I, who can I be praying for? Who do I need to reach out to? You know, just even stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Um, and I can hear the Lord just speaking in my mind. It's like, I don't know the brain science behind it, but just like my brain is like so much more attentive than it was, but it's just like fasting from something. Um, so I appreciate you sharing that experience. And I'm glad you brought this up too, Lindsay, because I did notice that in most of the classic works that I was reading, it talked about food. But I am not a millennial or a Gen X, Y, or Z, as you can see. So um, (laughs) food for me would be more of a real uh, deprivation, if you will. Mm. But if your whole world of social and connection is a social media, I would think it would have the same impact. So I could put a 
a phone down and not play games, but I could watch a movie or call a friend or do an email or write a note or go out and see people. Uh, but if I don't eat, there's nothing that's going to replace that. Well, that yeah. could be the place social media is. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. let's, it, it's important. Yeah, yes, that's a good word. To, to recognize that. Yeah, thanks, Kathy. Um, okay, so how does fasting during Lent contribute to the preparation for Easter and celebration of the resurrection? Like, why talk about fasting during the Lent season? First of all, I think we're very fortunate that the church has a liturgical year. Mm. It's important because all the way back in the desert, when that second generation was finally getting ready to go into the promised land because the first one kept complaining and murmuring and never made it, what did Moses tell him? Remember. Mm -hmm. It is so important for us within our faith to remember our faith. So what are we talking about Lent? Okay. I think the climax of the four Gospels is the cross and resurrection. Amen. And that's Amen. where we are in salvation history. Somewhere down the line, the full climax, Revelation 19, he's going to be coming on that horse for us. But that's not where we are yet. Mm -hmm. So we get to, as a church, okay, when you think about this time during Lent, think about we are free from death mm -hmm. and we're free from the power of sin mm -hmm. because God was willing to leave his throne, mm -hmm. enter humanity, and to take on all of our guilt. Mm -hmm. So we realize on the cross what happened. Our freedom mm -hmm. from, from sin and our ability to have eternal life had a cost. Yeah. And God paid that cost for us mm -hmm. on the cross. Yeah. So I think as wonderful as the resurrection and Easter is, you have to remember what happened on Friday. And I like that we're being intentional about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then about Easter, okay? Mm -hmm. Even Good. Paul will tell us, it's in 1 Corinthians 15, without the resurrection, we have no hope. Think about the human experience without the resurrection. So think about what Jesus did for us. He defeated death. And so we're not hamsters on a wheel just doing the same thing generation after generation. Live, die, live. No. So what a time in the church calendar right, to factor this in and have us think about this. Yeah. So I think it's, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's really great. It's, be, it's a beautiful picture. And I do, mm, really I do love the idea of we again, rush through life and mm. our busyness. And when we pick up our phone or we satisfy our need for hunger constantly, yes, we aren't hungry much mm. as a people mm. in, well our, in, mm. in our culture, like mm. where we live. I mean, we don't really struggle mm. with that. Mm. And so for us to consciously practice awareness of what Friday means and what Christ did for us, like that in Lent helps us prepare for the, the beauty of the resurrection. Mm. So... Mm -hmm. Thank and we've you. described fasting as really a personal, intimate thing with between you and and God. But how can but you described your friend, and so this kind of maybe leads right into this question. But how can families and communities support mm. each other in maybe fasting practices during Lent, or even just the Lent season in general? I did grow up in a tradition in which we fasted regularly. Okay. And we did it as a family, as a church. Oh, okay. So every single Friday we fasted meat. And during Lent, we fasted something else, a dessert, a sweet, something like that. So number one, we learned as a young age that God was important. Yeah. Okay. Then what you could do, let's say, for example, as a family, we're not going to do our famous pizza and dessert, this ice cream uh, every Friday. Then you can, as a family, pray. It's The family should start it. And the beautiful thing is that you're doing it in community with your family. We had the option, uh, opportunity to do it as a church community mm -hmm. because everybody was doing it. So it was very much part of it. And I'm going to be really honest. As I started to go into churches where freedom in Christ was very important, I, it was very easy to bury that down until you asked me to do this. And it, it started mm -hmm. to rot between you and my – all within the same week. That's it's time to bring it back up oh, because no. I enjoyed the freedom in Christ yeah. and mm -hmm. forgot the benefits of that. But I would also say what New City's doing. Mm -hmm. And it's New City is putting this back uh, in the forefront. Mm -hmm. Lent, mm -hmm. what we're doing here in the podcast, we're recognizing there's a need to teach people about this because perhaps some people have never heard about it. Mm -hmm. And then ironically that I'm speaking to both of you who are the community leaders, what about a community group? Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Even though Jesus says to do it in private, he was talking about people wanting to walk around and looking religious not the encouragement between each other. Okay. So perhaps a, a, a group could say, 
well, let's talk about this. Let's pray about this. Mm -hmm. And then you might be doing your fasting privately, and then perhaps then you can share what happened. So I think we're on the right right track. I love that. Yes. That's a great thought. Thanks for sharing that, Mm -hmm. Kathy. Uh, So as we wrap up, one final question. What would you say to someone um, who is fasting or thinking about fasting for the first time? Well, probably what we've been saying all through. The entire episode, yeah. (laughs) And I really do think repetition counts. But remember, the purpose of all of this is to seek God. Now, that's my word. So let me close with the words of Scripture. Now, listen to this promise. Many of us know Jeremiah 2011 about the plans the Lord has for us. But if you read further, there's gold. Mm. And think about who this is. This is the creator of the universe, the one who defeated death that says, you will seek me and you will find me if you seek me with all of your heart. Mm. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. That's what we're talking about here in fasting. Amen. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Kathy, for being with us. Would you mind praying um, to close our time together? Be happy to. Thank you, Kathy. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. We thank you that we could be here in this season of Lent and that we can spend this time, use all this technology, reach people to let them know God loves you. This is all about God wanting to be um, in relationship with you. He wants you to see who he is. It's not about punishment. It's not about that at all. It's about a Lord who loves his people. And the whole story of scripture tells us that. Now we have an opportunity. We can come to him anyway. I always say, if I was in the Old Testament and came to that altar, I'd have nothing to bring, but that's not what Jesus sees. He wants to be with you. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you that our church is intentional. We hope that we're reaching people who might be thinking about this. There is there is a feast at the end of your fast, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Because remember what he said, if you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me with all of your heart, because I will be found by you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of your mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Thank you.